Okay, so good morning. So, we will continue with our study of uh, radiative transfer, radiative processes in the atmosphere. So, we looked at the definitions and the basic laws. Okay. So, uh, we defined what is intensity, we looked at solid angle, difference between plane angle and solid angle, the spherical coordinate system. Then, we looked at the radiation loss, essentially the Planck's black body distribution, how it is derivative and making it stationary led us to the Wien's displacement law which says lambda max t is 2898 micrometer Kelvin okay. and then the integral of that gives you the Stefan Boltzmann's law which gives the black body emissive power and then using the concept of the solid angle sigma t to the power of 4 and lambda max t is 2898 micrometer Kelvin we solved a gamut of problems ranging from what will be the color temperature of the sun we figured out that if you take the maximum to be 0.475 micrometer the color temperature turns out to be 6100 Kelvin. But the sun's black body distribution does not exactly, sun's distribution does not correspond to that of a black body, therefore there will be some minor variation. But for all practical purposes, unless otherwise stated, in this course, the uh, temperature of the photosphere is 5800 Kelvin, all right. And then in involving all these concepts of sigma t to the power of 4, solid angle and all that, we solved some problems where we found the earth's temperature from the sun's temperature, sun's temperature from the earth's temperature and so on. Now it is time for us to go a little deeper and what happens in an, in an atmosphere which has got absorbing and emitting gases, what happens to the fate of radiation which goes through a gas which is participating that means which will participate in the absorption, emission and scattering. So this is quite different from air in this room which does not participate because radiation can go from one wall to the other wall and this is called surface radiation okay because air is radiatively transparent, we can just let the radiation pass. But you have got water vapour in that and carbon dioxide, methane and all this, these are all strongly absorbing gases, you can also scatter, that means scattering is reflection from a volume, reflection is generally from a surface, scattering is from a volume. So and this scattering need not take place equally in all the directions, if it is equal in all the directions it is called isotropic scattering, if it is not the same in all the directions it is anisotropic scattering. Then if it is anisotropic and it is wavelength dependent, so if it is wavelength dependent and direction dependent and so on and you are considering three dimensional radiative transport in the atmosphere, then it is a very, very complex, so very, very tough problem to solve because unlike your uh, CFD problem where you are solving for, uh, you, you get the temperature and velocity, here you have to solve the radiative transfer for every wavelength, okay, for every wavelength and so it is going to be very, very difficult. So, there are some programs which do what is called line by line calculations, okay. Line by line calculations mean I will solve the radiative transfer for 1 micrometer, 1.01 micrometer, 1.02 micro. Why should I do that? Because in the last class I told you the absorption spectrum is, is such a uh, treacherous function, it is not same, it is not, uh, it is not equal for all wavelengths, are you getting the point? So, different parts of the spectrum, carbon dioxide, water vapor, they play mischief. So, you will have to solve this and then if you are interested in finding out what is the total radiation coming out in the IR, total radiation in the short wave and all that you integrate between two, between the two limits lambda 1 and lambda 2. Then you will do that integral lambda 1 to lambda 2, I lambda cos theta d omega d lambda whatever, I lambda cos theta d lambda, okay. So, it gets messier and messier, uh, therefore some approximations have to be done if you have to treat radiation in the atmosphere. Usually we treat radiation to be one dimensional, what does it mean? The atmosphere is only a few tens of kilometers, the radius of the earth is 6370 meters, uh, kilometers, 6370 kilometers. The height of the atmosphere maximum we see that after 50, 60 kilometers it becomes very rarefied, assume it to be 80 kilometers. So, 80 by 6300 is very less, therefore we will say that all the radiative processes, the variation of the intensity in the other two directions that is except the height, the other two coordinates they are not significant. This is a very crucial approximation we make in the atmosphere which is called the plane parallel approximation. We will look at this a little later, I am just giving you overview. So, with this plane parallel approximation, the equation of radiative transfer becomes a one dimensional equation. Just because it is a one dimensional equation, 
it does not mean that it is easy, it is what I call what I say it is deceptively innocuous because it has to be written for every lambda and you have to work it out for every lambda, for every lambda you should know what is the absorption scattering and absorptivity emissivity and the scattering coefficient and so on which will come from spectroscopy. So, that chemistry and physics they are involved, so you need a database to evaluate all this and for example, if somebody wants to do planetary science in other atmospheres, some, some of you may be interested No, you want to study what is happening in the atmosphere of Mars, Mercury or Venus or somebody wants to study that here, then who will give the data for that? You need to know the composition of those gases in those atmospheres and then you need to get the properties and all that, so that is the, you cannot just a free body diagram and solve and uh, wow, upward force is equal to downward force, you can, it cannot be made so, so simple like that, okay. Now, we will have to go a little deep into the physics of scattering absorption and emission processes, okay, which will logically lead us to the governing equation which is the RTE equation, it is RTE, radiative transfer equation. Some people, see we should not say I will repeat again, no, you say it again or you repeat? You got it? So, I should not say RTE equation, I should say RT equation or RTE, you got the point? People who have not got the point or are in delicious slumber. No, absorption So, today it will be a little bit dry, it will be theoretical, but there will be some silver lining is some part in today's class we will see why the sky is blue. So, that the answer lies in the study of scattering and all that, okay. So, some, some place we will try to answer that question by solving a problem. So, consider a small control volume, one dimensional, two dimensional is it, three dimensional, okay. This one, so this ds, radiation is going through that. This is a small gas volume, we call it as a elemental gas volume, okay. The intensity here is I lambda at S, the intensity here is I lambda, no I should not make it so, hmm? you will make it here, huh? it is okay, hmm. somebody is doing something. Huh? Can you go on? Oh. So, we will move, we will proceed, na? okay. So, I can happily, I can merrily go here. Is it still shooting or it is on? Huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, this uh, the I lambda, the intensity which is coming out, so this is the direction of the radiation. Oh, this is badly drawn, no? you draw a straight line properly. So, that whatever is coming out of the control volume is equal to whatever is entering plus correct. This from simple Taylor series neglecting higher order terms, okay. What do you think this d a lambda by d s into d s will be? d a lambda by d s is the rate of change of intensity with distance, d s is the local coordinate is s, okay. So, this now you have to know that this is minus kappa lambda i lambda n into sigma, please note this, note this carefully. So, the d a lambda by d s d s into d s is minus i lambda kappa lambda 
into d s right. What is this? Scattering or absorption efficiency this is the intensity this is the number density number density of particles in the atmosphere this is the cross sectional area of the So, let us cancel out the d s so, this has got meter minus 1. So, this is 1 by meter cube this is meter square what is a what are the units of I lambda watts micrometer radian into 1 by meter let us come here 1 by meter Scattering or observe, let us figure out. I think I made a mistake. Let us figure out. So, watts per meter square micrometer steradian n is 1 by meter cube, sigma is meter square. Correct? What do you get? Watts per meter to the power of 4 micrometer steradian it is not balancing. So, this the scattering efficiency should be dimensionless correct then it is watts per meter cube micrometer steradian ok. Now, what is important is For a gracious atmosphere, we can for a gaseous atmosphere we can represent equation 2 in a more convenient form. as mm. rho is density of air Uh, R is mass of now this is mass absorption coefficient. please check the dimensional consistency of this please check the dimensional consistency of this
left hand side is right side is are we doing fine so i'm happy i think it's fine no pa ah. density of air you will always know right what is r mole fraction no no mass fraction kappa lambda problem you have to get kappa lambda from data books or from database or from spectroscopy and so on but if you know it for an individual gas okay if you know for one gas it is possible for you to write this and then you integrate it between limits and that we will see a little later but first we will have to formulate the problem the first part is formulation of the radiative transfer problem in the atmosphere now so this rho r kappa lambda is called the volume scattering sometimes it is also called the extinction coefficient why so some radiation is coming like this then it becomes i lambda plus d lambda so the rate of change of this i lambda with d s depends on how much of this radiation is absorbed and then if it is having a temperature more than 0 kelvin this will also emit radiation according to the provost law then if the particles and if there is a that we will see if there is a particular uh, relationship between the wavelength of the radiation and the size of the particles then it can scatter also and it can scatter in various regimes that we will see a little later so the fed so whatever is coming out will be after all this radiative all these processes are finished these processes could be one of the three scattering absorption there is no emission in this case we have uh, considered as weak emission because uh, emission term will add to emission term will add to this i lambda are you getting the point now i am saying that di lambda by ds is minus that means i am not considering i am considering the case of a weak emission or no emission so there are only two processes which attenuate or reduce the intensity as it passes through a gas volume this could be reflection it's just reflected off which means it's scattered or it is absorbed so whatever is coming out will be less than whatever is entering okay that this is the most uh, difficult thing to calculate for various gases at various wavelengths it is not one value it is not one value like thermal conductivity of water thermal conductivity of water is 0.6 watts per meter per kelvin you close the Uh, problem with that you solve any convection problem with that or thermal conductivity of uh, mild steel okay 40 watts per meter per kelvin you solve the problem the radiative transfer problem cannot be solved like this you understand and if you if there is emission i'm just giving you a sneak peek if there is emission that emission will be governed by the planck's law and so on okay or if you for example consider this to be integrated over all the wavelengths then you will have di by ds minus this absorption term plus the emission term the emission term will have sigma t to the power of 4 because you know the stefan boltzmann law okay then if you have to integrate then you have to integrate okay uh, across some area or volume or something like that so you will have uh differential terms on one side of the equation and integral terms on the other side of the equation which makes it as what is called as an integral differential equation which is very very difficult to solve okay for example in the gas volume it is enclosed here furnace 
So there may be some emissivity like this. There is a gas who is having emissivity, who is having absorptivity, who is having a temperature of Tg. Then the dA lambda by dA is all this applicable here. Then there is radiation from here to here, here to here, here to here for which the view factor, solid angle all these things will occur. Therefore, this contains both surface radiation and gas radiation. So, this will become an integral, in, integral equation. If you want to solve for the temperature distribution, then you may use some conduction or convection apart from this radiation. Then finally, you will end up with what is called the integral differential equation. So, this is very, very difficult to solve. Okay. And all these complications are there, right? It is a function of lambda and so on. Now, uh, so this uh, kappa lambda n sigma this is an important assumption we are making what is this can you understand this What am I saying? I am making a very, very important assumption here. What is this term? This term actually this term is responsible for reducing the I lambda, isn't it? Okay. So if a gas consists of several, if the gas is a mixture of several gases. We are saying that the contribution from each gas is additive that is an important uh, assumption. So you can find out the sigma 1 kappa lambda n 1 and all that for individual gases find out the individual contributions add that will be the overall contribution. That means we are neglecting the cross effects or the interaction effects between various so how is that possible and all that to a large extent this is valid. Okay. So, Contribution of various gases and particles are contribution of various gases and particles are additive and not addictive. Huh? They are additive, okay. Then comes the important relationship so if you know the absorption if you know the kappa lambda for absorption and kappa lambda for scattering you add these two and together you call it as kappa lambda of extinction. For a no scattering case, the kappa lambda of the extinction will be the same as the kappa lambda of absorption. For a heavily scattering and low absorbing case, kappa lambda of scattering will be equal to the kappa lambda of extinction will be equal to kappa lambda of scattering. But emission is not included here because we are talking about extinction. What are those things which reduce the I lambda? Emission will increase the I lambda. So, it will be an additive term instead of minus I lambda kappa lambda, there will be some more term. One more additive term, Kirchhoff's law will come. You know Kirchhoff's law? Kirchhoff's law it connects emissivity and absorptivity. That we will come to in the next class, not now. Okay. Now we will have to look at some scattering. I want to show something. Okay. The title should be scattering by air molecules and particles. Sc 
Catering is such a big subject, we can have a course on that in radiative transfer. We can offer a course on radiative transfer of the atmosphere for which some 25 hours we can spend on scattering, okay. So, in one or two hours we will see what best we can do. Uh, there are several theories like say Rayleigh scattering, me scattering and so on, okay. What did I say? And particles. Scattering is reflection from a volume, scattering is direction dependent and scattering is also wavelength dependent. Therefore, getting scattering properties is a nightmare if you want to solve a radiative transfer problem. For example, when we are solving the microwave, microwave radiative transfer which our group has been doing for the last 12 years, then for each wavelength if you have to calculate this scattering properties, it is anisotropic. So, it is extremely difficult. Why? Not only are the properties wavelength dependent, all the raindrops are not of the same size. So, there is a size distribution of the raindrop also which will be a Marshall Palmer distribution or this thing or gamma distribution and so on. So, you would assume a distribution and then you look at how many particles, how many sizes you are taking. For example, we assume some 100 sizes. For each of the sizes, we have to find out the scattering coefficient. Then use what is called the single scattering assumption. That means, there is no interaction. Then find out for each of these diameter, for each of these sizes, what is the scattering and then kappa lambda n 1 sigma 1 plus kappa lambda n sigma 2 and all that you added and then get the overall scattering for one wavelength. Then if you are solving the microwave radiative transfer for 5 wavelengths, depending on your sensors, what uh, ISRO or NASA is doing, then you will have to find out the scattering coefficient for each of these wavelengths and as many number of wavelengths as there are sensors on your satellite. So, remote sensing calculations or radiative transfer calculations can be very, very formidable and it involves databases, it involves tedious calculations, time consuming calculations and so on. Okay. Now, we will have to look at something called x. Consider spherical particles in the atmosphere. Consider a spherical particle in the atmosphere, its radius is r. The lambda is the wavelength of the radiation. We want to look at the scattering of scattering of the radiation of a wavelength lambda by a spherical particle whose radius is r, there is a size parameter which is called x. Okay. Now, we have to define a complex refractive index m equals uh, so this is refers to absorption Speed means speed of light by speed in particle. Okay. Electrical engineers are happy, right? Once you see I. Who are the electrical engineers here? Uh, the moment you see I, you some movie I is going to come. Huh? <laughs> okay. Mechanical, chemical, civil, all the, when we, when we see I, we get nervous. <laughs> huh? Correct? Uh, where is this now? Yeah, I will give you a present. Uh, slide. So, you try to copy as much as possible or I can post it to you on this thing. Try to just copy a little bit of this. The So, size parameter versus wavelength. So, this again from the book Wallace and Hobb and atmospheric science and introductory survey. 
So, you can have no scattering, negligible scattering and heavy scattering. So, the scattering cannot be, so to cut a long story short, the regime of the scat scattering and whether scattering has to be considered or not, not depends just, it just not, it does not just depend only on the wavelength or on the size of the particle, it depends on a parameter called x, that x is 2 pi r by lambda. So, you first calculate your x and then figure out your r and figure out your lambda and find out in which portion of the, in which portion of the graph you are in. Depending on that, you will have to handle the scattering for that regime. For example, for very low values of lambda and very low values of x, should you worry about scattering? Should you worry about scattering? Very low values of lambda, 0.4 to 0.7 solar radiation. Do we have a, this thing? Mouse, huh? Okay. So, let me explain this. Okay. See, 0.4 to 0.7 is solar radiation, lambda, but the m, okay. So, the look at this graph very carefully. It is a log scale on both the x and y axis, correct? because it shows a decadal variation 110 100 okay and uh, this r is also the radius of the particle now consider solar radiation air molecules size is like this the m is very small i mean x is very small x is one is here size parameter x is lower here x is higher here so i have put x equal to 2 pi r by lambda so x is increasing in this direction so if you look at this, the size of the particles, air molecules less than 10 to the power of minus 3 micrometer, smoke, dust and haze or 0.1 micrometer, cloud droplets can be 10 micrometers to 100, drizzle is 100 micrometers, rain drops can be millimeters, you know that, you do not require somebody to teach you. Okay. Now, the solar in the solar radiation which is incoming air negligible scattering, but once you have smoke, dust and haze, some scares, air the Rayleigh scattering will be like this. So, some amount of Rayleigh scattering will take place, okay. but the moment you are looking at cloud droplets and this thing and so on, so the uh, game changes. Let us go to micro, uh, microwave, what did I say, what is the lambda for microwave, please flip back. Hmm? 10 to the power of 3, more than 100 micrometer, right? Yes. Okay. More than 100 micrometer. So, if you say in the microwave part of the spectrum, you are here, correct? Drizzle rain. I want to, I want to find out what is the radiation coming in the microwave part of the spectrum in a raining atmosphere. I will have to use geometric optics or, optics or me scattering theory, right? Which is quite tough involved. Okay. So, depending on the size of your particles, depending on your lambda, you will have to apply different scattering theories. Is that okay? So, this is basically the sum and substance of this. Now, particles, Particles with x much much less than much much less than one are relatively ineffective at scattering radiation. So, 
this is called the Rayleigh scattering regime which is indicated on the which is indicated in the picture. People have done studies to show that kappa lambda varies as lambda to the power of minus 4. For? For what? Rayleigh scattering. Plus scattering is isotropic, it is same in all the directions. Okay. Let us solve a problem now. Problem number forty. Problem forty seven. Estimate the relative efficiencies. Estimate the relative efficiencies with which estimate the relative efficiencies efficiencies with which red light bracket lambda equal to 0.64 micrometer. Estimate the relative efficiencies with which red light bracket lambda equal to 0.64 meters close bracket and blue light. lambda equal to 0.47 micrometer are scattered by air molecules. Okay. So, if you extrapolate first what is the regime? Air molecules are here, okay. 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 if you extend this line what regime is applicable? do not say it would not be scattered and everything is 0, Rayleigh scattering. Okay. Now, I told you for Rayleigh scattering it, it the kappa goes as lambda to the power of minus 4. So, I just want you to find out kappa of red by kappa of blue and comment. Is it clear? Marius, no? Not really. The absorption coefficient as a function of wavelength goes as lambda to the power of minus 4. Now, first part of the story is for air molecules and visible part of the radiation, which part of the scattering is working? Okay. So, this is air molecule. See, watch. We are looking at air molecule. So, you have to look at this line. Okay. Oh, what happened? So, you have to. Okay. So, you have to look at this line. Is it okay, Marius? Then you are looking at 0 0.4 to 0 0.7. So, you are looking at this. So, this is the line which is coming. So, it comes under which scattering? Rayleigh. How does Rayleigh scattering? The kappa vary, scattering coefficient vary with wavelength. I just gave you the relation. So, find out kappa lambda of red divided by kappa lambda of blue. Rohan done. Please do it. Okay, 40. Problem is? Ah.
from the chart we see that Rayleigh scattering is applicable. So don't <laughs> so this is point six four huh? What did he say? Ah. Hence, there is a domination of scattering by the wavelength blue color in the atmosphere compared to red. This is evidenced, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, this is evidenced by the blueness of the sky, particularly when it is smoke free and it is free of aerosols. Okay. The next question will should come, why is it not violet? You will ask no, violet indigo blue right? Ah. If that is so, red to violet will be even higher. Why is the sky not violet in color? The human eyes are incapable of detect detecting this violet too much. Okay. The blue is the preferred. We are able to we are able to see blue more clearly. Okay, because of that, the sky is not violet in color. Doesn't appear to be violet in color. Okay, so now let us go to the next regime. We'll just speak for another. I'll speak for another five minutes and we'll close. We want to go to the me scattering regime. Is this clear now? Why are the oceans blue in color then? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so, right? Unless, they, but sometimes it is green also. Huh? I don't. Know. Then change your glasses. <laughs> huh? So, so for point 0.1 less than equal to x less than equal to 50, okay, that regime, this regime is the me scattering is applicable. Okay, uh, so so the refractive index is one point five, and uh, m i is zero means there is no absorption. For this case, for a sample case, it is worked out. So 
so it works out like this so you can see that once you have me scattering which is applicable for rain drops the analysis becomes difficult it is not simply lambda to the power of minus 4 for every lambda there it appears to have a value isn't it so for point 1 less than x less than equal to 50 for a chosen value of let us say m i equal to 0 and m r equal to 1.5 please note down the scattering efficiency has a damped oscillatory behavior it has a it has a damped oscillatory behavior it, there appears to be a mean value of 2 what can you say further about this as lambda keeps on increasing this kappa lambda tends to hmm? as lambda keeps on increasing the kappa lambda steam seems to attain a steady state value of 2 ok. So, then we will have to look at some uh, absorption by particles and all that we, did, we looked at scattering then we look at absorption by particles and then we will close as you can see I cannot ask many problems in scattering and all that because it is not isotropic then kappa lambda you will have to do integration so it has to be a take home assignment we cannot simply solve problems involving scattering in the me scattering regime it is very very difficult okay.